I guess we were worried about the effect on the global economy. But with the sanctions, we didn't really target it. But you're saying the, the unintended consequence is that it happened anyway. That's exactly right. I mean, I think the U.S. in particular has been very, very clear that they don't want to include energy uh, sanctions because, again, you can see that already. I mean, the panic that we're seeing in the market right now at $110 oil, we are going to be going a lot higher. I mean, we are going to go to 150 even higher than that, because the only solver right now in this market is demand destruction. Uh, otherwise, just the amount of supplies that could be potentially at risk because of all these banking sanctions, we were supposed to get lists of banks that are exempt from SWIFT. Uh, and now there's been some headlines that EU countries are saying there won't be any exemptions. So nobody wants to take the risk of transacting with a Russian entity if you know those banking sanctions are going to be coming or there's no clarification on who's going to be exempt. So absolutely right, it's unintended consequences, but huge ramifications. So how many years, months or years would it take to replace Russia's contribution to global uh, oil production? Well, Russia produces 10 million barrels per day. It exports about Oh, ten and a half. It exports about half of that, five and a half. The problem is, right now, there isn't enough spare capacity in this world. Yes, Saudi Arabia has some, UAE has some, OPEC Plus as a whole has a little bit um, with their current deal, and they are meeting today. The issue is you cannot, if, this is not our base case, but if all of the Russian exports can't get to market, um, even if you exclude the pipeline that's still flowing, that is going to be well over 4 million barrels per day. And spare capacity is half of that. That's the problem. We can't replace okay. it. We just don't have enough oil. We don't have enough investment. I, would, I guess I, maybe I should ask this question first. It was, if, if we assume that this is going to be a protracted conflict that we're seeing, and, and we were talking earlier about what do we do to, to Russia if they take Ukraine and keep it. So if, if these sanctions stay for, if we try to isolate Russia and Ukraine for a year, two years, and this oil is taken off the market, how long do you think oil stays at $150 a barrel, which is, is your target? That's, that was, I was, how quickly could we ease the supply constraint so that we bring it down from 150 It doesn't seem like it'd be that easy to do. It won't be. And the only solver will be a recession. I think the problem really for the world economy is that the amount of oil, not just oil, right, it's gas, coal, uh, metals, grains uh, that the world relies on, not Russia, Ukraine, um, from them uh, is enormous. And I think that is the real challenge right now, that the solver is demand. And to get demand down, we will need a recession. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.